Hello and welcome to Being Is Forever. I am Dorothy and I am so happy that you decided to tune in to watch me today. Today I want to tell you a story, a very special story about a bird that I'm sure that once you've heard the story, many of you will identify with the plight of this bird. The title of the reading is The Door Is Open why won't the cage bird fly? The door is open. Why won't the cage bird fly? I asked God. The answer came back. There is a big world out there, and though the cage bird can fly anywhere he wants, he doesn't quite know where to start. And though he can start any place, he doesn't quite fit anywhere. So then, God, how does the cage bird learns to fly? The answer came, he must fly. Fly where, I asked. Anywhere, but fly he must. You see, the cage bird didn't always live a confined life in the cage. Like so many of the other birds, the cage bird was busy soaring about, working, striving, and achieving trying to make a living and make a name for himself. All the while, he was teaching the other birds how to fly. And although things weren't quite perfect for the cage bird, he was quite content working, striving, and achieving, and teaching the other birds how to fly. But one day, the stress from working, striving, and achieving and teaching the other birds how to fly. Tiredness, stress, exhaustion, and discouragement set in and got the best of the bird. And little by little, he stopped working, striving, achieving, and even teaching the other birds how to fly. And he retreated into his cage. When he stopped working, striving, and achieving, and teaching the other birds how to fly, no one even noticed that he had stopped. But the cage bird was glad that no one had noticed because, to the other birds, he had always appeared to be so much stronger than they, and he did not want that opinion of him to change. He did not want the other birds to know that he too shared many of the same problems and weaknesses as they. So without a word to the other birds, he silently entered into his cage to rest and reflect for a while. He had no intentions of staying in the cage, but time passed by so quickly. One day, one week, one year went by, and he hardly noticed that so much time had, had, had passed by. Life in the cage was good. The cage was comfortable and he enjoyed being there away from all the stress of working, striving, and teaching the other birds how to fly. And though he never meant to stay in the cage, the cage became so comfortable that he just didn't make the effort to fly anymore. In fact, the cage became so comfortable that the bird decided he didn't need to fly anymore. Everything he needed to survive was right there in his cage. And with the advancement of technology, he could even work from the cage. He could work and talk to the other birds, and he could even teach the other birds how to fly right from the comfort of his cage. However, there were necessities of life that the bird needed to retrieve outside of the cage, necessities such as food and water. These necessities provoked the bird to occasionally leave the cage, but he always managed to make it a point to rush right back to the cage. He never stopped to mingle with the other birds, and even though he didn't understand why he always felt the need to be in such a rush to get back to the cage, he had many reasons as to why. He had too much work to do in the cage and that he didn't really want to be bothered with the other birds. 
They were boring and would take up too much of his time. And besides, they weren't his type. And anyways, he didn't even fit in. It was true, the cage bird was quite different from the other birds. He was smart, intelligent, and wise beyond his years. He loved indulging in conversations on subjects that the other birds either had no interest in or they simply couldn't comprehend. They were just content being, making small talk, or doing whatever fancied them at the time. Their ways of being bored the cage bird. And since that was the case, he reasoned he was better off being alone in his cage. And so he continued working, striving, achieving, and teaching the other birds how to fly from the comfort of his home with no direct contact with the other birds. But one day, the cage bird grew tired of being alone in his cage, and once again he wanted to fly. Not only did he want to fly, but he wanted to soar and feel the wind beneath his wings again. He wanted to feel alive. But by now, the only life he knew was the life that he had built inside the cage. He wanted to fly with the other birds, but now he felt like a stranger. He didn't feel comfortable relating and being with the other birds. Every time he would attempt to fly, he would hear the same old questions or the same old voices in his head. And the voices went something like this. The world is so big, where will I go? I don't have friends, who will go with me? It's just me. I am alone. I can't fly alone. It's no fun flying alone. And as he continued to reason in such a way, sadness and despair set in and he would retreat further back into his cage. He now realized that the cage that had once brought so much comfort and so much security had now become his prison and the source of much pain and regret. So now you know why the door is open but the cage bird won't fly. Are you a cage bird trying to learn how to fly again? We all have a cage bird story. What is your cage bird story? Would you like to share your story? If so, visit me at beingisforever.com and tell me your cage bird story. Thank you for watching.